Let's talk about parrying. Parrying is pretty cool. There's standard parries, there's really fun parries, there's cool parries, there's parries that aren't really important, and there's parries that are borderline impossible to even pull off. Or I just suck. My point is that there's a lot of different ways of implementing some form of parrying into your game, which is relevant as I'm currently making a game with parrying in it, and my game's parrying sucks. I originally planned for it to work sort of like the parrying in Sekiro, where you tap the shield button just as the enemy's attack lands, but what I didn't take into account is that parrying isn't a one and done sort of thing in Sekiro. This works for Sekiro as parrying doesn't instantly knock the enemy down or anything. You have to pull it off repeatedly to fill a meter before you actually see results, so naturally for this system to work you need to be able to parry quickly. My game, however, does not have any sort of meter or anything, so being able to pull off a parry quickly isn't nearly as necessary. This doesn't sound like it would be to my game's detriment, and if it were the only problem with this system it wouldn't be, it'd probably still be just fine, but there's another more important problem I foresee with it. This obviously isn't a thing yet, but in the finished game I plan for the player to be able to upgrade their shield, which in addition to increased damage reduction, increases the window for pulling off a successful parry. However, in its current state, parrying is just a short window after you start blocking, so there wouldn't be any dedicated animation for parrying, and thus there'd be no indication of its increased window of opportunity. Aside from maybe a different sprite, there'd be no visual difference between the base shield and the fully upgraded one, so parrying wouldn't be very clearly communicated to the player at all, so not only would the difference be invisible to the player and thus make the upgrade feel underwhelming, if the player doesn't pull off a parry, there'd be no way of knowing what they did wrong. For all they know, it could have been too early or too late or even a glitch, and I feel like that would just be sloppy and bad. I think a game's mechanics should almost always be clearly communicated to and understood by the player. Another thing I'm not in love with about the current approach to parrying is that it doesn't feel as decisive as I think it could be. Without a dedicated button or animation, it would just feel like it sort of happens, which wouldn't feel very good or be satisfying to pull off. Overall, there's just a lot of problems with the parry I currently have, so I'm going to spend this video fixing that and creating the perfect parry. Well, maybe not perfect parry, I'm not sure such a thing even exists, but I'd like to think the parry I've created is at least the perfect one for my game, or at least as perfect as it can be right now without sprites or sounds or anything. First things first, parrying is something that needs to be really satisfying to pull off, as it's sort of a high risk, high reward kind of thing. A game I think pulls this satisfaction off perfectly is Metroid Dread. It's actually the closest parry I can think of to what I'm trying to make. When certain enemies perform certain attacks, there's this white flash effect to indicate that the coming attack is one that can be parried, and when you do the melee attack just as that attack wouldn't land, it instead gets parried. The screen shakes a bit. The enemy recoils back and is stunned. The camera zooms in on Samus, who is already primed for a follow-up attack. This is your moment of truth. The player presses the button to follow up with an attack, and BAM! Out comes a souped-up version of your normal blast, instantly eradicating the enemy from existence. This system is great, damn near perfect, I think. Everything is clearly communicated to the player, the enemy telegraphs the fact that their next attack can be parried, Samus's animation makes the window for parrying abundantly clear to the player, it's extremely satisfying to pull off thanks in no small part to the camera zoom, and the powerful follow-up attack makes it well worth taking the time to parry. All in all, this system is really good. In fact, maybe a little too good. If I remember right, parrying instantly kills pretty much any enemy, and a good chunk of enemies in the game do have some sort of attack that can be parried, which may or may not make parrying just a little overpowered, maybe. This isn't really a bad thing or a complaint. I think Metroid Dread is really, really good, and is like 95% the template for parrying I'd like to follow, but for my game specifically, I'd kind of prefer to nerf parrying a bit, as I don't want to just funnel players into only using that, though I am admittedly more of a dodging kind of guy anyway, as shields and gender passivity, so I may be a bit biased here, but I just feel like it's best for my game that parrying isn't that good. It still needs to be really useful and rewarding though, so there's a certain balance I need to strike here. I think the best way of doing so would be to A, make parryable attacks less common, making over-reliance on them actually impossible, and also B, to make the follow-up attack not as powerful. Insta-killing is very fun, but for my game I think it'd be best to make the follow-up attack just do extra damage, kind of like guard counters in Elden Ring or the parries in Smash. But if just one stronger attack were the only benefit to parrying, then I feel like it actually wouldn't be that rewarding at all, as you could just hit the enemy a couple times to get the same end result, so there needs to be something more. Since parrying generally stuns enemies anyway, I feel like the best way to strike a balance here would be to make the first follow-up attack do extra damage. For now, I settled on two times a regular attack, but then on top of that, the enemy is left open for multiple regular attacks, kind of like when bosses get staggered in Elden Ring or Hollow Knight. Not only would the player feel rewarded by the powerful follow-up attack, but now they would feel like they got something extra on top as they can scramble to get some attacks in while the enemy is still vulnerable, making them feel like they were able to outsmart the game and get a huge advantage, though in actuality it's of course all calculated, as it allows me to balance enemy HP with this in mind to ensure pairing isn't overpowered, but it still feels satisfying and rewarding. It kinda reminds me of Five Guys Fries, how they always accidentally spill a little extra at the bottom of your bag. It's not actually an accident and is completely calculated, but that doesn't stop you from 
from feeling like you got a little extra. At least I'm told that's part of their business model, but now that I think about it, I've never actually been to Five Guys. Cut the bag, and the legends are legends are kind of true, maybe a little overblown, but you got that. So that in this, <laughs> what am I doing with my life? In this analogy, that would be the follow-up attack after you parry the enemy, and that. That would be all the regular ones on top. Can I write this off as a business expense? Yeah, anyway, getting back on topic, that more or less covers how I want pairing to work, though there's one more issue with the current system I haven't fixed yet, which is that it doesn't feel very decisive. This is very easy to fix. Instead of just automatically starting the timer, I instead changed it so that if you press the attack button while in the blocking state, that starts the timer, with the intent here sort of being like a shield bash like in Skyward Sword. This fixes the issue of it feeling like it just sort of happens, is having a button to press makes it feel more like a conscious decision that you commit to, and just makes it feel better in general. Additionally, this will solve the lack of visual communication, as once there's sprites and animations, there will be a shield bash animation. So as you upgrade your shield and increase the window to successfully parry, the shield bash animation would in turn get longer to actually indicate this. I also added a cooldown timer so you can't just spam the shield bash button over and over. Having taken the best from many worlds, here's a sort of demonstration of what the parry will look like once there's animations. The enemy starts to telegraph their next attack, and near the end of this animation there's some sort of flash or other indication that the attack can be parried. The player sees this and holds down the shield button, bracing themselves to parry. The enemy attacks, and at the last second the player presses the attack button to perform a shield bash, parrying the attack and knocking the enemy down. The camera zooms in on the player, staying there while the repost timer is higher than zero, which is something I forgot to mention starts now when you perform a successful parry. While the camera zooms in and the repost timer is still going, the player attacks, unleashing a larger, more powerful attack, and is also able to follow that up with a bunch of regular attacks. I only have placeholder shapes for now, but here's what it looks like a little bit in the future because I was too lazy to add the zoom in when I actually reworked pairing. Without sprites or sound effects, it's definitely not as cool as I described, but once there are sprites and sounds, I think this system will be a really fun, great fit for my game's combat. It's clearly communicated and gives enough feedback and reward for it to be really satisfying to pull off. Making this a dedicated button press also makes it feel a lot more user friendly and better feeling, I think, which makes me feel comfortable with and got me thinking about adding other ways of using the system aside from just knocking down enemies to get extra damage in on them. This was also inspired by this great Game Maker's Toolkit video on what he calls versatile verbs, which is sort of about getting the most out of your game's actions. It got me thinking of other ways I could design enemies around pairing, as it's a lot more usable now, and I've already had some good ideas I'm really excited about. For example, this test enemy from the future that's like a better version of this plant enemy from the prototype, which just spat out a seed at you and you had to block it. This new version, however, spits out a seed and you have to deflect it with your shield in order to kill it. There's not actually a parry animation or anything, so you're just gonna have to kind of take my word for it that I am actually pressing another button to perform an action here, and it's pretty fun. Or another idea I had for much later on is an enemy that shoots a projectile at you and you would have to shield bash to deflect it, much like this enemy, however, this enemy would then take on the affinity of whatever projectile you bounce back at it was, and you would then have to attack with the opposite. For example, if this enemy throws sort of ice projectile, you would bounce it back at them and it turns them all icy so you'd have to shoot it with the fire staff, and I think that would be a pretty cool enemy because using different mechanics together like that is always really fun. These are just two of the many possibilities this new pairing system opens the door for. Overall, I think it's much better than the previous way of doing it, and I'm excited to see what I can get out of it as this game develops and actually has enemies that aren't abstract shapes. I realized this video covered almost no programming, which may be a disappointment for some, but honestly there wasn't a whole lot to show in terms of code this time. Really, the only change I made at this point was changing the parry timer script to start when you press the button instead of automatically, and adding a repost timer, though later down the line when I made a test area and some test enemies, I did add some hit stop as well as the camera zoom, but those are just a couple lines of code as well. Since I don't really have much to show of it, I wanted to make this video more about the thought process and design of my pairing rather than programming, which is good because design is what I'm more passionate about anyway. 
Anyway, having now done that, I think this is more or less a good spot to end this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next one, where I'll go over how I'll be handling player health and how I designed a health bar that I think is far superior to the one in the prototype. I don't usually like to do these sort of improvised outro end card type things, but for some reason when I wrote the script for this video, I just kind of didn't write an ending, like I didn't say bye or anything, so here we are I guess. Uh, bye. Just take care. Uh, go away because this video is over now.